Hello, this is the last of our seven short video clips in response to the COVID-19 situation. This video clip will be on safety culture. Safety culture is developed and maintained by the collective offshore workforce. It requires strong beliefs and values that are committed to working safely and caring for one another. It requires a commitment from everyone to work towards a common goal of going home safely every time. To measure safety culture or to assess safety culture, you require to consider how committed the work team are to working and caring for one another. We've talked about that in one of our previous videos. What you should be looking for is a genuine intent to care for one another a genuine emotional buy-in to deliver work safely. We should also require communications that are clear, concise and frequent. We need to understand what safety critical tasks are in hand and being conducted by whom. We can only do so by communicating effectively. An additional new member to the team or a change in roles and responsibilities can completely knock the balance of normal operations and communication. So I'd ask that you please take the time to consider how well you are communicating safety critical information during the planning and execution of your work. So let's talk about control of work. Control of work requires good process discipline, excellent task communications, and also good assurance around tasks executed. Control of work is a fundamental aspect of developing a good and strong safety culture. With all that's going on, it's understandable that you may be preoccupied and miss some of the key steps that define control of work. What we ask is that you recognise the impact that losing focus and control of work can have on the safety culture of your installation and your team. Also fundamental to safety culture offshore is the competence of the individuals and the work team. We talked about that in our previous clip and I want to summarise by insisting that prior to conducting work and during the pre-planning you take the necessary time to review the team competence and individual competences in each and everyone's role, bearing in mind that they may have a degree of preoccupation due to the external influences that are going on around our country right now. It's important that you take the time to ensure that you have adequate and proper competence experience and knowledge to undertake the task safely. That is part of safety culture. Let's talk about complacency. We referred to that earlier on as not so much complacency but a preoccupation with what is going on in our home lives and also around the country. Complacency can easily creep into tasks without you really witnessing it. It requires a commitment, genuine demonstration of care for one another to understand if and when complacency starts to creep into your operations. It's important when you're not feeling 100% engaged in the task that you take the time out to talk to your supervisor to reassure him and your team that nothing's more important than taking the time to do it correctly. Lastly, when we come to safety culture, we have to talk about commitment. Commitment is when you're all engaged in caring for one another with a single focus on completing tasks safely. Commitment requires that there is no preoccupation with external influence. So again, I will reinforce the need for taking the time out, if and when required, to clear the minds, focus the team to undertake tasks safely. So as we bring the last of these seven short video clips to an end, I want to encourage you to think about the topics that we've discussed, they're all aimed at helping you to work safely, remain focused and execute the task in hand safely. We all ask that you play your part in helping everyone 
to get home safely.